Welcome to A Grey Barn Rising. I'm sitting here this evening reading the poetry of one of my favorite poets of all time, the Chinese poet from the Tung Dynasty, Wang Wei. Sitting here with Bootsy Beagle. Bootsy, you want to look and say hi to everybody? Want to say hi to everybody? Okay. This is Bootsy. She's taking a little nap, but I wanted you to see her sweet little hound face. And of course, I'm drinking my famous cup of Drum Mountain White Cloud Tea as I read the poems of Wang Wei. Wang Wei lived uh, during the Tang, as I mentioned, the Tang Dynasty. He was born in 701, uh, Common Era, and he left the body in 761. Wang Wei is one of the great poets of the Tang Dynasty. There were many. Um, part, he's particularly known for Buddhism. I think it's difficult when we think of the Chinese poets to categorize them too cleanly into this poet was a Taoist or this poet was a, a Buddhist. There was a lot of crossover and the terminology doesn't hold very well, but it's also a helpful construct in some ways to create a context for the Chinese poets. Um, so I think I, I will use those categories just as a touchstone. We have the great Taoist poet of uh, the Tang Dynasty, Li Po, and we have the great Confucian poet, Du Fu. Wang Wei was really the first great Buddhist poet of that period. He spent, well, he spent a great deal of time not only uh, in an official position, but he retired years later to the mountains and spent his time with monks and with uh, meditators and communing with nature. He uh, also, in his, his Buddhist poetics, loved nature, connected to the mountains and streams, and saw his place in the natural order as intricate and involved. But just like a Chinese landscape painting where you have the mountains are huge, and the rivers are large and the landscape is immense and you might have seen these these paintings and scrolls where the people are very very small in many cases because they're just one piece of the, the natural environment and in many ways that's how long ways poems read they read like paintings i said paintings but they also read like paintings he was a skilled painter he was known as a painter and he was also a skilled musician. He played the lute and I believe he played other instruments as well. What a fantastic poet. I'll be reading from a few different collections of Chinese poetry translated into English. The, uh, the gold standard of uh, poetry of the Chinese translations as far as I'm concerned is Sunflower Splendor, 3,000 Years of Chinese Poetry translated, uh, co-edited by Wu Chi Lu and Irving Lowe from Indiana University Press. I'll begin with my favorite poem of Wang Wei and one of my favorite poems of all time, entitled, To Sub-Prefect Chang. In late years, I love only the stillness. The world's affairs no longer trouble my heart. Looking at myself, no far-reaching plans. All I know, to return to familiar woods. The pine winds blow and loosen my sash. The mountain moon shines upon me, playing the lute. You ask for reasons for failure or success. Fisherman's song enters the riverbanks. Beautiful little poem by Wang Wei. This is a, an anthology of poetry translated by Sam Hamill called Crossing the Yellow River, and it has a healthy inclusion of Wang Wei's poetry. I want to read Wang Wei's poem, Crossing the Yellow River, which is given, which Sam Hamill takes as the title for this entire anthology. Crossing the Yellow River. A little boat on the great river whose waves reach the end of the sky. Suddenly, a great city, 10,000 houses dividing sky from wave. Between the towns, 
There are hemp and mulberry trees in the wilds. Look back on the old country. Wide waters, clouds, and rising mist. One of the things I love about Long Way is the self in many ways is erased in a Long Way poem as, as the individual dissolves and merges with the wider universe. And the larger cosmos is foregrounded, yet at the same time, even in his exacting images and spare use of emotions, there's such an emotional depth in Long Way that still gets communicated. It simply blows me away that he's able to do both. He's able to erase the self and yet communicate the deepest longings of the self at the same time. And I hope that comes through in some of the selections I have found for you. Let me read from Laughing Lost in the Mountains, Poems of Long Way, translated by Tony Barnstone and Willis Barnstone and Zhu Haizen. I mentioned he spent a lot of time with monks and meditators. This is for a monk from Fu Fu Mountain. I offer this poem while we are eating dinner. With age, I learn the value of quiet and feel apart from crowds. Detachment has come to me, expecting a monk from a remote mountain. First, I sweep out my own shabby rooms. From peaks wrapped in cloud, he descends to my overgrown grassy on straw mats, we eat pine nuts, and while incense burns, we study the Tao. As day leaves, I light the oil lamp, and at nightfall play the singing stone bells. Tranquility has brought me happiness. Life is slow and full of leisure. Why worry deeply about return? when body and world are like empty void. It's interesting that I mentioned uh, too easy of a, of a designation, say, as Wang Wei, the Buddhist poet and whatnot. There he mentions the Tao, for example, and mentions uh, the great void, which is present both in Taoism and in Buddhism, but he mentions studying the, the Tao. Um, well, what the heck, while well, I'm on this page, let me read Visiting the Mountain Courtyard of the Distinguished Monk, Dan Zing, at Enlightenment Monastery. He leans into twilight on a bamboo cane, waiting for me at Tiger Creek. Hearing Tiger's roar, he urges me to leave, then trails a pouring brook back to his cell. Wildflowers bloom, beautiful clusters. A bird's single note quiets the ravine. In still night, he sits in an empty forest, feeling autumn on the pine forest wind. And I think the last book that I'll read from this evening from Wang Wei is this marvelous book, Hiding the Universe. And uh, this is translated uh, by Y. Lim Yip. And gorgeous, gorgeous poems and beautiful drawings in this book. You ever find this book somewhere, pick it up. You will, you will not be disappointed in the least. Villa at the foot of Mount Chungnan. Midway in life, attuned to Buddhism. Late years, a home I made at South Hill. Often on impulse, I walk out by myself. Magnificent scenes I alone know. Walk to the source of the stream and sit down to watch clouds rise. Sometimes 
I meet an old man in the woods. We talk and laugh and know no return. Such a sweet closing, huh? We talk and laugh and know no return. Mm. We'll often get those moments of deep insight, not only through a long way poem, but they come uh, near the ending as well. Sent to prefix Y G. Deserted city bleak all by itself. A million miles, mountains and rivers void. The sky high, autumn sun, distant. Piercing cries, flights of homeward geese. Coal, pond, mirrors, withering grass. Halls, dwarfs, scattering sycamores. In face of dusking years. And one shadow, a song of the sad old man. Friends can no longer be seen. Loneliness is east of the level forest. There's such sweetness in a Wan Wei poem and such tenderness. And I hope that this brief introduction encourages you to seek out the poems of Wang Wei and other uh, poems of the Chinese masters. Uh, I'm especially drawn to the, the poems of the Chinese poets of the Tang Dynasty, but there's such a rich tradition there to draw from and plenty of really wonderful translations of 